Hi, Tom here. In this Circle Line Art School video, I'll show you one way to draw a 3D optical illusion of the year 2022. You could put any numbers or letters in that you want. The technique would be the same. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Circle Line Art School, to keep up to date with all of the content that I make. For this drawing, I used a 4B pencil. Any pencil that would make a good tonal range, a shading range of dark to light would be really good. I also used a pen and I used a very thin blue pen for the blue lines that I put on the paper later on at the end. But you could just use anything that you've got at hand. An anamorphic drawing is a drawing that looks three dimensional when seen from a particular point of view, from a particular angle. When it's seen at this particular angle, it sort of pops out as a three dimensional object. The illusion can be quite strong if you get it right. The first step in this drawing is to draw a horizontal base softly with a soft mark of pencil for the base of the numbers that you're drawing. And this line needs to be towards the top left of your page. Next, we can draw another horizontal line higher up for the top line of the numbers of the page. And then we can draw some vertical lines to divide this up by the amount of letters or numbers that you're using for your drawing. So because I'm drawing 2022, I need four rectangles. I think I'll draw another line underneath the baseline for the thickness of the base of the numbers. So let's start by drawing the first two into the rectangle that we've got. Because there are three twos, I'll do the three twos first of all, a bit like swans next. And then whatever you do on the first one, you want to sort of repeat that. If you've got a letter or a number that repeats, you want to keep them so that they look even. So that they look like a set. I think that will do for now. And then the zero. I'll draw the hole in the middle of the zero and then a rough indication of where that will go. If you're drawing numbers or letters, it doesn't really matter which. The main thing is that they look as even and as uniform as you can make it so that they all have the same sort of style because we don't want these to look distorted. We want these to look very well organized. Once you've got them roughly how you want them to be, and got the shapes that you want, then you could use an eraser to tidy them up a bit and then make the lines darker. Next, we need to draw a dot for the position of where we're going to look at the drawing, but also for where the extended lines from the edges of the numbers or letters are going to go towards. The best position to place this dot would be somewhere towards the bottom right of your drawing. And this will also be the position where the illusion will work best. Once you've placed the dot, then draw a line from the bottom left corner of the first letter or number that you have. And then we can draw a series of lines from the bases of the numbers going all the way to the dot. You could use a ruler or you could just draw them freehand. Might be good to use a ruler unless you can draw very straight lines. So we'll draw another line here and then one more on the far right corner. But then there's another line here for this edge. That can go all the way to the dot. And then as this line curves around, there is a point in the curve where we can extend the line to the dot. And then we have to just find another one here on the tip of the number two. And then on the base tail of the two. And then on the curve of the second two, we can have another line here. And remember, each one of these lines, preceding lines, just needs to go directly to the dot. 
But if there's another number or letter in the way, then we just need to stop the line at the point where it reaches the other number or letter which is nearby it. So there's one more there. And well, there's another one at the tail end of the first two. So they're all of the receding lines that need to go away to the dot. For this drawing, I'm using a 4B pencil, which gives a nice dark tonal range when it's needed. And in the top inner part of each letter or number, make it as dark as you can, but then use less pressure on the pencil to make it lighter. Next, we can repeat the same technique, but this time on the outside form of the numbers or letters. So the aim is to make it so that these tonal shadings that we do start in the corners and they're dark, but then as they follow the curve of the surface around, they become lighter. And all of these tones are sort of graded from dark to light and then to dark again. And that will make a sort of metallic, solid look to the illusion that we're creating. We can travel the tone. We can sketch in the tonal values towards the point, the dot for our anamorphic drawing. And then with these flat surfaces, of the bases of the twos, they won't be graded so much, but probably we could start them dark, but then they could be graded perhaps in another way a little bit. So as they go towards the point, they become slightly less dark. Next, we don't want these numbers to go all the way to the point, so we can draw a horizontal line where you want them to stop and that will create how tall they look in the illusion. Make them taller than you think they should be because when we look at them from the dot they'll look shorter. Then we can repeat the shapes at the front of the letters or numbers to the back. So now we know where the illusion is going to stop. We can erase all of the receding lines to the dot and the dot itself really, so that we have the part of the drawing that we need. And then we can continue adding tonal values to the drawing. Then we can add some more tone to the base of the shapes and it just takes a little bit of time to shade in and make it really dark. And try and keep it as neat as you can. For this drawing I found I needed to sharpen the pencil point quite often so that I could get into the smaller details and make the shapes seem sharp because the shading is graded but where the shading stops, it stops at the outlines. So the outlines, I'm trying to keep the outlines as sharp as possible, but the shading within the outlines on the curved surfaces is graded, and the shading on the flat surfaces is more flat. Now, when you're shading, it's a good idea to remember that the each sort of line of grading is going towards the point the dot that we drew earlier, so that the highlights, the brighter parts on the curve, also go towards the dot. Within the circle, I think I need to make that darker because it would cause a sort of shadow on it within the whole of the circle. So we're not shading the actual numbers, we're shading the thickness of the numbers as they're receding away from us towards this point. Now with the sides of the tail of the twos, as it were, I'm just going to put a very soft mid-tone, just so that eventually 
the actual numbers at the top will be the only thing in the shape of the numbers which isn't shaded. So again here we can add a little bit more tone in this area here going down towards the base of the numbers and then we can repeat that again on the third shape like this. So it's a flat shape so draw more or less a flat tone but you could change the tone and maybe make it a little bit softer as it goes further away. Once you've placed in the tones so that they look quite solid then I'm just going to use a very sharp pencil, mechanical pencil and carefully draw some lines which are evenly spaced as much as I can and again it might be an idea to use a ruler for this, no problem with that and this will make them eventually look like they are part of a lined piece of paper. You don't need to do this, it's just an added thing that you could consider. So I'm drawing these lines as guidelines very softly and then I'll use this very fine thin blue pen and very carefully go over these lines again and then the blue pen will make it look like it's lined paper. That's the aim. You could also consider extending these lines, these very very thin lines as they recede away from the letters or numbers that you're drawing towards the point, the single point for the anamorphic optical illusion. And then I've just drawn a simple rectangle behind the numbers and drawn a series of blue lines to represent lined paper. And now at the edge of this rectangle on the right I'm just going to put a simple drop shadow using a Forby pencil again so that there is a slight illusion that this is a piece of paper on top of another piece of paper. So now I think the anamorphic optical illusion is starting to work quite well but the key thing that will make it really work particularly if you place other objects around it, is to create a shadow so that the numbers and letters that you're drawing have a shadow to them. So I'm using the side of the pencil and then the aim is to make the shadow the same as the shadows where you're going to be looking at the illusion. So by placing some of the drawing tools that I've been using onto the piece of paper, and trying to create the shadow by copying the shadow of the objects which are around it. All of these little tricks will just help your illusion work better and better. So we have the actual numbers receding in anamorphic projection and then we're looking at it from the point of view of where the dot was, that dot that we drew earlier on just trying to figure out how we can get it so that it looks like it's really solid. What's the best view to see the optical illusion so it looks really solid because it's only really going to work best. It's going to work best from just one viewpoint. So that works quite well. But maybe I'll move the camera down a little bit more. Then I've added a piece of paper on the right with the eraser on top of it and I've cut the paper at an angle so that paper looks, if you don't look too carefully, it looks like that paper goes below the lined paper. So all these little things can just help the illusion. But remember the illusion will work at other angles but it will definitely work best if you look at it or take a photograph of your drawing from the point where all of the lines are receding to. So we're seeing this drawing, this optical illusion, anamorphic projection from the point and it's the point where the depth of the shape is receding towards. Hopefully you found this useful for your own drawings and had a go and were able to create a good illusion of three-dimensional letters or numbers. 
it would be quite straightforward, I think, just to change the date to make it 2023 or to write it as a name or a word. The same technique would still work very well. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about how to draw, please visit my website, circlelearnartschool.com, where you can stay up to date with all of the content that I make. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications of when I post new content, which I do every week. Thanks for watching and see you next time.